What you need the most is hidden in the places that you do not want to look at all. It is the shadow that is the richest material for us to learn and to grow and to become the people that we're searching for. And if you are willing to face the darkness, to turn in and say, I've been running from you. What is this? What gives? Clearly, you're not going away. So what's up? The darkness, the darkest parts of ourselves are the richest. They are the most profound. They are the most resourceful and they have the most wisdom for us. And that is worth discovering. That is worth getting to know. Because here's the thing. Everyone experiences darkness. There's a lot of people who can't be honest about it, especially public figures, you know, who portray like, I've got it all figured out. And it's like, yeah, they're either lying to you or they're lying to themselves. There is going to be darkness in everyone's life. So preface, hey, I'm Ash. Thanks for being here. We're going to talk about the shadow. I'm going to talk about what it is specifically. I'm going to offer some simple practices so that you can start to turn into it. What I don't want is for you to wallow in the sadness or the, like, I want, I want to provide some things so that you can progress your life, respect the shadow, learn from the shadow, and take a step forward into the life and the person that you really want most. And when you do not shy away from the shadow and you bring everything that you have into it, your true success, your healing, your freedom, your growth, like you get to become the person that you are searching for. You don't need to numb out. You don't need to sex out. You don't need to drink too much or eat too much or... Okay, so hey friends, my name is Ash. Thanks for being here. Uh, honest chat real quick before we talk about what is the shadow and I share some simple practices. One year ago in this house, I was upstairs truly to the day, which is part of the inspiration to make a video on doing some shadow work, I had reached an all-time low in my life. Now, this video is not for me to stand here and lament and complain, but what I wanna do is acknowledge how far one can come in the journey, how much can change, and to respect the shadow, respect the stuff in life that feels absolutely impossible. So one year ago, I was upstairs and I was writing in my journal and I was like, you know what? I'm done. I can't figure this out. I think I'm a resourceful person. I mean, I've spent 15 years of my career helping people have the most profound change, but I can't figure it out. I've done 15 five-day five day meditation retreats. I've got spiritual teachers. I've like, I just, I had reached a point in my life where the tools that I had and, and how I was functioning in life, it wasn't working. And I, I just, I couldn't figure it out. It was a dark moment. It was a scary moment. And out of that came a couple things, a deeper respect for the shadow and this idea that, not even an idea, it was a very profound, visceral understanding that liberation can actually feel like defeat in the moment I felt super defeated. I was at the end of my rope. I couldn't figure it out. But in retrospect, when I could look back now, that Ashley was being liberated. Ashley was being liberated from her old self with great respect, no shame. But there were parts that could not make the journey forward. And that was what was being surrendered. And it was extremely difficult. So I just want to say... I get it. I get the reality or the intensity of doing shadow work, both in a challenging way, but also as the most beautiful work that we get to do as human beings. Okay, so let's talk about why does this even matter? What I've learned. <laughs> Curious what you think. <laughs> why are we even talking about the shadow work? I actually think this is what is going to save us, us as a species, the planet. I would be curious if we would be, you know, if you take a look at what we are experiencing on a global level, would we be experiencing that if people were doing the shadow work? Do you think the leaders who are going to war with other countries, like had they done the shadow work, do you think we would be having this experience right now? I'm going to say no. This is a personal belief. I think turning into the stuff that hurts with love and compassion and curiosity, this is the stuff that is going to save us 
quite literally, we will shop less, we will sex less, we will drink less, we will numb out less, we will scroll less, we, we will be, I think we will be more inclined to be with ourselves when we are not well. And the impulses to shop and to feed like that just Dante's hedonistic, it's almost like I imagine that that will come way down and the, the desire to be with self and to care for self, well, it's, it's kind of like this. And so I just think of the natural world and how when we humans are more resourceful and capable or courageous to work on our shit respectfully, it's going to save the natural. It will save the world in which we live in. Okay, why else does the shadow work? The shadow asked my husband, who didn't want to come on camera, he said, I said, hey, honey, he's, he's, Way cool. Guy's super cool. I said, honey, what do you think? What do you think the shadow is? And he said, the shadow is the doorway to the fullest expression of self. And I was like, absolutely. Love you. Yes. Thank you. I actually think it's the shadow is our salvation. So when we can turn into these parts of ourselves that are not well with respect and reverence and work to understand that and rehabilitate it and create the future based on, you know, whatever the past presented us. That's our salvation. That's how, that's the fuel for us to create the life that we want most and that we are searching for and yearning for. I, I sometimes think or joke or I don't know if it's joke. It's not joking at all. When I'm kind of in my head, it's like nothing is going to save us but ourselves. So what is shadow work? I think it's an invitation for us to face the parts of ourself that could use some TLC without question. I think shadow work is, it is the most important work that we could do as a species. I mean, other animals on planet Earth don't have the brain that we have. The shadow work is our salvation. It's not defeat, but it's liberation. So when we can face and we can do and we can process and we can turn into that stuff. Again, I have to say this with love and compassion and curiosity, no shame and judgment. That's just going to make it worse. That's our salvation. Like that is our ticket to true freedom. I know for myself, when I was upstairs and writing, like I'm done, I can't do this. Man, I wish someone would have had this conversation with me. Just like, Hey kid, you, you got it. Just keep going. You know, like, it may seem as if you're doing everything wrong or, but it's like that version of myself, she had to die. Okay, so here are a couple ideas or concepts if you would like to flip. Again, does the shadow part of ourself feel good? No. Um, is it preferred? No. Do we all experience it? Yes. Think of it this way. Do children feel good when they're growing bones? No. Are those bones critical for their continued success and well-being in life? Absolutely. Do children feel great when their teeth are growing? No. Are those teeth essential for that child's well-being and capability as a human? Absolutely. So we could think of the shadow work kind of as a similar way. Like, does it feel good? No. No. Absolutely not. Okay, I'd love to share three concepts so that to start to flip from this victim mentality, like life sucks, life is against me, blah, blah, blah. Like how is it to really start to flip that into a place or a stance of empowerment? Life is not doing it to you. Life is doing it for you. It is not defeat, but actually liberation. But specifically, here are three things. And you may not like what I'm about to say to you. I'm not sure. It's, it's a way to reframe. Okay. Number one, maybe if I stand here, number one, why is anything actually bad? So whatever you have going on, why is any of it actually a bad thing? Is it preferred? No. Is it desired? No. Does it feel good? Probably not, but why is it actually a bad thing? Okay, number two, kind of sound like a broken record, but I think this is the essence of the video. Liberation oftentimes feels like defeat. Number three, what if instead of avoiding and resisting the thing, the shadow, what if instead of turning away from scrolling, sexing, too much alcohol, too much sugar, too much shopping, too much whatever, what if instead you find that edge in yourself and you say, you know what, life, clearly this has meaning for me, almost like bring it. 
spare nothing. I want to feel this. I want to feel this in a way that I've never felt it. So it's almost like greeting everything with a level of curiosity, even excitement, which sounds kind of crazy, but I think the more you practice it, it's like, this is where we get to fall in love with life and doing the work and doing the practice and facing the shadows and rehabilitating these parts of yourself. This is where everything can change. So why wouldn't we want to greet that with an open door policy like life? You want me to feel this? Bring it. Turn up the heat. Spare me nothing. I want to know the ins and outs of this. We're going to play a game. My intention is to not to keep you in the deep end any longer than you need to be. Now that's not my say, that's life say, but I'm being very intentional about how we're gonna do this here. I wanna help you swim to shore. I wanna help you feel like you're making progress to find more love, to find more compassion, to find more curiosity. That's the stuff that is going to shift it all. Okay, we're gonna play a game. Please bring to mind the biggest hurt that you currently have something that you've been avoiding. You can write it on a piece of paper. I mean, to really ask yourself, why is this actually a bad thing? Why, if we can just remove the judgment, you know, why is it actually a bad thing for you to experience anything in life? The good, the bad, the light, the dark. So bring to mind the thing that has been most challenging. Just breathe into that. Actually, I'm going to invite you to breathe, take a couple deep breaths. I want your system to start to know that it's safe to like, you can experience and feel whatever you're going to experience and feel and that that's safe. And the more that you do this and the more that you practice this, you're gonna be less at odds with yourself. We welcome the shadow, we welcome the light, we welcome the pain, we welcome the love. Open door policy, it's all welcome. Is it preferred? No, open door policy. Okay, and the next piece I would offer is, and this is what I used a lot when I was going through it in the thick of it is I would write, it's okay to feel dot, dot, dot. I don't have to like this. I don't have to love this, but it's okay to feel that. So in the name of healing and freedom, it's okay that I feel this way. Okay. The next piece, if you would like to take it a step further. So the next couple questions that you could ask yourself are, and what would I like? What would I like now? Actually, that's the language and comma, what would I like now? Answering that question can start to add more choice to your menu, your menu in life. What would I, what would I like now? Like I respect this. I don't like it. It's okay to feel this way. It sucks. It's great. It's awesome. It's awful. Okay. Remove the judgment and what would I like now? And then I would say step two is to write a letter however long or short, to the, to the creative force, the greater mind, God, be it what you want, but hey, hey you, I need you. Please support me through this process. I'm understanding more that liberation can actually feel like defeat and I'm ready. I'll go through this, I'll stay open, I'll learn what I need, I need your support, I need your guidance, be obvious. Be obvious with me. Show me where to go. Show me how to be. Show me what to say. Like, you take control. So that's what I got. I hope this video is coherent and makes sense. I mean, it, I couldn't make this video a year ago because I felt like garbage. Now, in closing, I'll say, hey, Amash, like and subscribe. If you're at a place where you need proper support from a therapist or a counselor or something like that, please get that. This YouTube and this channel, they're not meant to function that way. And I say this with great respect. I'm not a therapist. I don't do crisis work. I want you to do well. So please access, there are paid resources and free resources that are available. So please access something to, you know, think of it, collect like an army of angels, people who want you to do well, people who can be with you through the process as you do the shadow work. That for me is most important. Okay. Oh, and I, this is what I was going to promise. So a couple things that I did over the last year that helped me do a 180, like I had never felt so happy and clear as I do now. It's like the storm has passed. It is crystal clear. There is no question. Okay. First thing I gave up drinking for me. It was not right. It was messing with my brain chemistry. 
I don't judge it, but alcohol is a natural depressant. It messes with your hormones. May want to try it. I started doing, I started microdosing psychedelics. I'm not going to say which one. I hope this video doesn't get tagged and pulled down, but that was extremely helpful. I was very specific. I had support. So tried a couple things that were good and right for my chemistry and had a specific outcome. They had a great outcome, maybe did it four or five times and it really started to correct things. I started meditating more, especially in the morning. So before I even turned on social media or the news, I spent more time in quiet, more time writing, more time meditating. I started exercising more, making myself move physically. Well, it was extremely helpful. It can do a lot of things to balance hormones and, you know, help with endorphins and all that stuff. So get out, go move your body. And I just, for me, I stayed close with a few people that I trust and that like, you know, my spiritual teachers, I kind of cut the noise out. Like the noise inside was already too much. Yeah, it's interesting. So I hope this is useful. I'm Ash. Thanks for being here. Like and subscribe. I want to get this channel going, guys. Help me out. Most of you are not subscribed, which is fine. But if you like the content and you want to party, like and subscribe. I'm probably going to teach more about the shadow, probably more specific. But the essence, if I had to sum it up, face the stuff, the pain with more love, more compassion, and more curiosity. Those three things are the most powerful thing to transform anything. We do not kill, we do not harm, we do not kill, we don't do anything. We don't kill fear, none of this. We don't do that around here because what are you doing? You're killing a part of yourself. Like, please, we don't do that. Okay. I'm gonna go outside. It's extremely beautiful outside and celebrate how much can actually change. And that when we do the work, everything we want is just on the other side. Liberation often feels like defeat. Good day, good night. This is your friend, Ash.